Veronica Ome was a 38-year-old man who lived in Geta 7 with his girlfriend, Precious Vundla, a 24-year-old. Geta is a high-density suburb in Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. The two had dated for approximately 10 years, which seems a little bit inappropriate considering that she would have been 15 by the time they started dating and he would have been 28. Rodney suffered from a hot temper and would occasionally get into conflicts with people in his community. He also had been in violent confrontations with his girlfriend but it had been nothing serious. So it is not amusing that on this particular day in August 2023, he had a rumor. The rumor was she had been over friendly with men at a Shabin in their neighborhood. A Shabin is basically an unlicensed and an unauthorized tavern. It is quite amusing that she would have been there in the first place because a Shabin is not a place for women. The only two reasons why she could have been there, she could have either been a seller or she could have either been a heavy drinker. We don't know for sure because we don't have adequate details of what she was actually doing at the Shabin. The main reason why a Shabin is not a place for women, it is because a lot of men when they drink, they become quite handsy and become inappropriate. Many women avoid places where men will be drinking. Infuriated by the idea that she had been fraternizing with other men at the Shabin, he questioned her but she denied the accusations. She claimed that it was a lie but he did not believe her. This led him to take out a golf club and hit her several times with it. She begged him for mercy as she screamed but he did not stop attacking her. She pleaded for assistance until the tenants came and knocked on the door asking him to stop hitting her. The tenants even broke into their bedroom three times to try and stop him from hitting her but he kept telling them to leave. Precious was in so much pain that she even asked one of the female tenants to call her mom but she did not want to get involved in a couple's dispute. As soon as the tenants left for the third time, Precious went silent. So they assumed that they had solved their problem and went to sleep. So the tenants also went to bed. But unfortunately, they had not resolved their conflict. He had strangled her to death. He even spent the entire night with her dead body and slept like a baby. Early the next morning, the female tenant did not see Precious. So she decided to knock on the door and call for her to see if she was okay. Precious did not answer, which led her to opening the door and discovering her lifeless body on the floor. She alerted the community who called the police and when the police arrived, they saw that this was clearly a homicide. He was then captured, arrested and charged with her murder. He was denied bail and remanded in custody at Kami Prison. A post-mortem which was conducted at UBH revealed that she had died from asphyxia which was a result of strangulation. Her body also had severe injuries as a result of being hit multiple times with the golf club. Rodney admitted and confessed to the crime of killing his girlfriend Precious and pled guilty to the charge of murder. In court being represented by Mr. Nkosienz Lempofu, he showed extreme remorse and regret for what he had done. High Court Judge Justice Evangelista Kabasa took into consideration that he was a first-time offender and that he was a father to three minor children. But she could not turn a blind eye to the nature of violence he had unleashed on Precious. He was 12 years older than her and he should have been leading by example but instead he chose to use violence to solve a conflict. Her sister and tenants at the house gave testimonies against him at court, accusing him of using unnecessary violence to solve a very small problem. He showed remorse and regret in his own testimony, but unfortunately it was too late. Precious life had been lost. The judge then found him guilty of murder and sentenced him to a mere 18 years in prison because there was no aspect of premeditation. He will only be released at 56 years of age. It's only unfortunate that he failed to control his temper. He would be a free man in his prime enjoying his life with his children. I believe that this case is a good lesson for a lot of people that like to use violence as a method to solve problems. Domestic violence is still one of the leading causes of homicide, especially in Africa. And we must do all we can to teach people that violence is never an answer. This is also a lesson for women. She knew that he was a violent man. She knew that he consistently went into conflicts with people but did not leave him. It's also a lesson for families members when you see your daughter living with a violent man or your son living with a violent woman it's advisable to tell them to leave while they still live may her soul continue to rest in eternal peace